Ichthyosaurs were an incredibly successful and long-lived group of marine reptiles that inhabited our planet's waters for much of the Mesozoic era. While dinosaurs stalked the land and the flying pterosaurs soared in the skies above, a whole host of incredible reptiles swam about in the prehistoric oceans. Ichthyosaurs are probably most well known for being a fantastic example of convergent evolution, whereby unrelated lineages of organisms evolve similar features due to occupying the same niche or environment, as many ichthyosaur species look remarkably dolphin-like. You may also be familiar with ichthyosaurs in their unfortunately all too common role as food for giant pliosaurs in various pieces of paleomedia. However, these amazing animals were much more than dolphin mimicking prehistoric fodder, with some truly bizarre looking forms known, as well as some absolute giants rivaling even blue whales in size, plus some terrifying macroraptorial ichthyosaurs that prowled the ancient oceans and would have been the top predators of their time. One of these top predators was the fearsome Thalatoarchon, a very large ichthyosaur from the middle of the Triassic period that was discovered in Nevada. This creature would have been right at the apex of the marine food webs of its day, and also tells us some very interesting things about how marine ecosystems recovered from the devastating Permian-Triassic mass extinction that occurred a few million years earlier, the so-called Great Dying, the most severe extinction in our planet's history. The fossil remains of Thalatoarchon were first discovered during fieldwork by paleontologists in 1997 in the Augusta Mountains of Nevada, but it wasn't until 2008 that the bones were then excavated, with the help of funding from the National Geographic Society. Over the course of three weeks, the fossils were fully extracted and loaded onto trucks as well as helicopters, and were taken from the field to be studied. Then, in 2013, Thalatoarchon sorophagus was revealed to the world. The name is very fitting for this beast, with Thalatoarchon translating to ruler of the seas, while sorophagus means reptile eater, both hinting at the ichthyosaur's position at the top of the oceanic food web. The fossil material of this reptile that was recovered includes most of the skull, just missing the snout, plus a series of vertebrae and a partial hip and hind limb. This would have been a massive predator, with an estimated total length of more than 8.6 meters, over 28 feet. The skull reveals a series of flattened, knife-like and recurved teeth bearing two cutting edges. The cutting edges lack serrations and both sides of the teeth are smooth, and comparing this dentition to other kinds of marine reptiles, paleontologists conclude that it belongs to the cut feeding guild, meaning it was adapted for slicing through flesh, rather than crunching down or piercing prey. In addition to the teeth, one of the other most notable features of Thalatoarchon is the sheer size of its skull compared to its total estimated body length. It had pretty unusual proportions for an ichthyosaur, with a relatively much larger head compared to its body size than other ichthyosaur species. This large head wielded the relatively largest teeth for its body length of any ichthyosaur, yet another indicator that Thalatoarchon was a formidable predator of other large vertebrates. The paleontologists who described Thalatoarchon indeed compared its inferred diet and tooth anatomy to that of modern-day orcas. This macro predator shared its ocean habitat with several other species of marine reptiles, with ichthyosaurs being especially diverse and including some smaller species that would have been the ideal prey for Thalatoarchon, alongside some fairly large-bodied members of the genus Symbospondylus. Another incredible ichthyosaur discovery has since been made in the Fossil Hill member of Nevada, when a second giant of the earliest Triassic was uncovered. Published in 2021, this other ichthyosaur was actually even larger than the already enormous Thalatoarchon, with a 2 meter long skull and an estimated total body length of more than 17 meters, over 56 feet. Named as a new species of Symbospondylus, this was Symbospondylus youngorum, and it would have dwarfed even Thalatoarchon. It's known from a complete skull and the front part of the body that was found at the same horizon in the Augusta Mountains as Thalatoarchon, and is thought to have had a fairly generalist diet, mainly comprising fish and squid. However, given its enormous size, it would also have been quite capable of preying on other marine reptiles too. So, whereas you can think of Thalatoarchon as sort of equivalent in ecological position to living orcas, Symbospondylus youngorum was perhaps more like a sperm whale in some ways, although it was still a unique animal not quite like anything around today. The discovery of Symbospondylus youngorum reveals something fascinating about the marine ecosystems of the early Triassic, and about the early evolution of ichthyosaurs as a whole. The prehistoric ocean represented by the Fossil Hill member was quite clearly home to several absolutely massive marine reptile predators, 
including other smaller but still big-bodied species of Symbospondylus. In addition to smaller ichthyosaurs such as Phalaridon and the ichthyosauriform Omphalosaurus, which was potentially a specialised feeder on hard-shelled ammonoids with teeth very well suited for crushing. The fact that a diverse range of ichthyosaur fauna was living here, alongside other marine reptiles, various fish species and ammonoid invertebrates, suggests that Fossil Hill had a stable food web and represents an ecosystem that recovered very soon after the devastating extinctions of the End Permian, the so-called Great Dying, the worst mass extinction event in the history of life on Earth. The Fossil Hill fauna seems to have been supported by the shelled invertebrates at the base of the food web and amazingly was able to accommodate the existence of marine predators already in the size ranges of modern whales. Due to the lower productivity of primary producers in the Mesozoic compared to their modern day equivalents though, the fossil hill web likely had fewer trophic levels than a modern sea, meaning there were fewer intermediate stages between the primary producers and the massive top predators. Modelling done on the productivity of this ancient ecosystem also found that fossil hill could even have supported yet another giant marine animal if it were a bulk feeder on organisms lower down in the food web, such as some sort of filter feeder, although nothing like this has been found here so far. Not only do these fossils provide us with a fascinating glimpse of how quickly oceanic ecosystems recovered after the Permian, but they also reveal a lot about the evolution of the ichthyosaurs themselves. Unlike whale evolution, with these animals reaching their largest body sizes only after more than 50 million years of evolution, Symbospondylus youngorum and Thalatoarchon were living only about 3 million years after ichthyosaurs likely first appeared, meaning they achieved giant body size remarkably rapidly in comparison to whales. Additionally, as far as we can tell from our current knowledge of the ichthyosaur fossil record, these marine reptiles seem to have achieved their largest body sizes around the end of the Triassic period, but lived until the beginning of the late Cretaceous period, and yet never quite got this large again. So, they show a very different overall pattern of body size evolution when overlaid with cetaceans, showing that, although they're often compared to cetaceans in terms of their convergent anatomy, they actually evolved as a group very differently. So, altogether, these incredible ichthyosaur discoveries in the Fossil Hill member illustrate that the marine ecosystems of the Triassic had rebounded geologically quite rapidly after the devastation of the Great Dying, and were home to the first in a long legacy of ocean giants. They also demonstrate the true diversity of ichthyosaurs as a group. These animals were not just the small dolphin mimics that acted as prey for pliosaurs, they were the first truly giant predators to ever exist on our planet, and lived for around 160 million years. Plus, recent evidence even suggests that ichthyopterygians, the lineage giving rise to true ichthyosaurs, actually originated in the Permian period and therefore made it through the Great Dying showing these reptiles to be extraordinary survivors. As my paleontology undergraduate project was based on ichthyosaurs, which I'll be making a video about at some point soon, and my master's project is also ichthyosaur focused, you can probably guess that I quite like these animals. They've always felt very familiar to me, often turning up in paleontology books and media, but it's always the same few species that are represented. Ichthyosaurus itself, usually Ophthalmosaurus or Stenopterygius too, perhaps Temnodontosaurus and maybe a Shastasaurid if you're lucky. But there's so much more to these fascinating reptiles, and I hope this video helps more people recognise this. The future of ichthyosaur research is looking very exciting too, and I hope my own contributions will also help to develop our understanding of these marine animals, which I'm very excited to tell you all about eventually. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, and do let me know what other kinds of ichthyosaur content you'd like to see from me. I'd love to do some more. Again, thanks for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.